Hello all, it's Coco of Vaccination, and I've been a huge advocate of warm mind cells since day one experimenting with them, and I see a lot more of the popular streamers finally giving Rasputin some love. Towards the end of this video, I'll give you tips on how to more frequently spawn the cells reliably, and whether or not it's worth your time to learn this system, since some of the info includes glitches that are kind of begging to be patched. To start, Warm mind cells, if you didn't already know, are mod-generated balls that drop only because you did something specific such as kill enemies with a 7th Seraph weapon, or Ikelos reprised weapon this season, and whoever pops the cell triggers all of their warm mind equipped mods and their armor to activate on that cell's detonation. In the background is a few examples of stuff I mercilessly obliterated last season, and as I think back now, I really, really miss certain mods. In Season of the Worthy, they were quietly the best thing a solo PvE player could build around because of the massive ad clearing and champion stunning potential. You can currently, as of Season of Arrivals, equip the mods into Dawn, Worthy, and Arrivals armor sets. Now, here's an image with a list of the mods. Thank you to Redditor Tyler Fordier Photo. Don't know if I said that right. Super helpful. There's going to be a link to that in the description as well. And my clan, you know, they're primarily interested in screwing around in PvP. So I became the May and started crafting different sets for each class, and by season pass level 150-ish, I became the patron saint of the public event, trying for those crispy e-prisms and exotics in Matchmade Nightfalls. And I probably have like 10 plus hours of footage on my Xbox from last season alone of me salvaging scuffed Nightfalls by using the cells. Now, as of the update on 7720, Arrival's armor will allow slotting charged with light mods. This is a huge, huge victory for anyone using Righteous Armor about to be sunset in a few seasons, as it's more time with Protective Light among all the other fan favorite mods. Thank you, Bungie. Now, I know these cells aren't exactly meta in the top tier PvE, but they will do work in the Contact Public Event, Lower Nightmare Hunts, Lower Nightfalls, Alters of Sorrow, etc. Basically wherever you want to wipe out a ton of stuff. They're wonderful for ad clearing and mediocre DPS against bosses, it's uh, really just fun to explore the mechanics of the cells. This loadout that I have on Gunslinger was just to see how high synergy I could get with solar to spawn cells, and since the footage I have refined and made a hybrid charge with light cell build that is significantly better. At least when I'm making this video, the cells are just getting talked about. Guess the secret's out now. So here are some example loadout potential. For my helm, I have the Holdfast Mask, it's a Void one, it's got Grenade Finder, Heavy Finder, Warmind's Longevity, uh, new Seasonable Pass Armor with decent stats, Void Slotting so I can keep Warmind cells on the battlefield longer thanks to Warmind's Longevity, never really used it before but just wanted to for the purpose of this video. Um, you can basically sequence your next moves a little easier, it's honestly just equipped primarily for using Grenade Ammo Finder. For gloves, I have Shards of Galanor on. Uh, Arc Affinity, Light Arms Loader, and Discipline. Not much to see here. These things have been nerfed multiple times and require heavy charge with light shenanigans to make worth equipping due to a glitch where you can nearly get your entire super back instantly involving a new sidearm charge with light mod, but we're not doing that here because I can make up for doing weird stuff, setting up the cells, by annihilating everything else with shards, and you can get some cells to spawn when you use Blade Barrage. For the chest, 7th Seraph Vest, Solar Affinity, Minor Resist, Reach Resonator, Inferno Whip, and Rage of the Warmind. Rage adds extra damage to Warmind explosions, pretty good, and Inferno Whip is just for the unstoppable champions so I don't have to have a pulse on because I don't have any other way to stop them. For Boots, 7th Seraph Strides, Solar Again, Mobility Mod, Sword Scav, Enhanced Sword Scav, Traction, Global Reach. Global Reach is cheap and extends the range of Warmind Cells explosions by a generous margin is the way I'll put it. It has always been the most useful of Warmind mods and will continue to be that way unless its range is significantly nerfed. Cloak, 7th again, Solar, Recuperation, Wrath of Rasputin. Uh, recuperation is just to stay alive, Wrath of Rasputin to create cells from solar explosions, allegedly, such as ones from Shards of Galanor, Incendiary Grenades, Weapons, speaking of weapons. Just using the mountaintop here and there, it's an overall DPS hero that will be missed after sunsetting. It can blow the cells up from a distance, but it has problems sometimes blowing the cells up and nothing happens. Sunshot, 
For the video purposes, primary way to generate cells seems to be a pretty low chance, but the explosive damage from Sunshot is okay at generating cells. It's not Tyrant Surge or anything, but what is? Uh, the weapon kind of holds up against a lot of enemy types anyway. Falling Guillotine, even without Lucent Blade, the sword is a monster at DPS. Sure, it doesn't generate cells, but it does a better job at killing one big enemy than the cells do. And also when I try to warm my stuff, I like to try Love and Death, soon to be the victim of sunsetting. Grinded like 30 of these, and even though there are new toys in the season pass, the explosive solar damage from this can generate cells. It can blow up the cells too, which Anarchy and Swords cannot. So for some of the pros, the seasonal artifact Kanjali last season and Tyrant Surge, you could reliably use a grenade melee super to spawn a cell and probably blow it up before the characters that you're trying to help. Pairing that with the other mod Hammer of the War Mine, it let you play both tactically and efficiently in Nightfalls, which you're seeing in the background right now, and with map familiarity, you could take full control of the strike to help your randos out. You ever try to do a forge without a fire team? Alters of Sorrow? How about that heroic containment cell public event where you have to freeze that dude? In Nightfalls, you have to kill the champions, which ask you to sacrifice a part of your loadout to disrupt them, and you have to kill all of the champions in order to make it worth your time for the rewards. When the game gave us the solution of only really needing to worry about having anti-barrier weapons on, you could wipe out a whole room and tickle the champ simultaneously. Additionally, it is very nice to mix up how you're killing the enemies. I have like 25,000 kills as of now between my Recluse and Mountaintop, and if every season going forward is semi-horde modes with emphasis on grouping folks determined to throw the event, then I need all the help I can get to prevent that. I don't truly believe in fully locking people out of lower nightfall simply because they don't have the correct mods on or, or lower power. We all have to start somewhere, and I'm not even that sweaty, but there needs to be a middle ground kind of safety valve for people who play primarily solo but are expected to carry. Hey, what are we, back to skill-based matchmaking? The cells open up a lot of utility, and the OG 7th Seraph armor is going to be where you should start if you have it from Season 10, since its max power level will be relevant for a few hundred more increases, and the Holdfast default Season Pass set is really good too, but I'm just throwing out the 7th Seraph gear as a suggestion because people likely burnt masterworking materials only to see another solar set in the Season Pass with similar stats, and probably say, nah, not doing it again. I think what prevented a lot of people from sticking with the mods was similar to Don's problem of throwing too much at you with too little explanation, and with that, let's talk about some of the cons of using cells. Also, here are some clips of the frequency of cells now, and maybe they're bugged. Uh, this was before I had the Eikolos weapons in this clip from this season. Uh, anyway, out of the cons. Charged with light mods and warm mine cells kinda synergize, but the elemental affinity requirement is asking a lot of new light or free to play people with limited time. Getting the hang of the mods and how to proc them slash when to expect them to work is also a pain too, never mind juggling charged with light and trying not to burn a high energy fire shot or whatever you're setting up. Not to say it's not worth learning how to use the cells, but it can be hard to get the flow down of your loadout. And having only one reliable way to spawn cells through solar splash damage seems to have a similarly low percent to drop like 7 Seraph weapons, and by the time you get a cell to spawn, you're kind of spinning the basketball or stunting. Another thing is that my clan plays on console, and hitting the cells cleanly is sometimes difficult on controller unless you're using a sniper rifle, a grenade launcher, or some other precision weapon. Something is definitely weird about the targeting of the cells. Kind of a minor complaint overall, but paired with the inconsistent cell spawns, it's kind of a bigger problem. If someone blows up your cell, they negate all effects on your armor, which is super frustrating, and sometimes people have those weird arc mods on that allow you to absorb cells, which is arguably worse since you have to work much harder than last season to spawn them. Wait for the Grandmaster tier rage you'll feel when somebody intentionally equips those mods in the middle of a nightfall after seeing that you're spawning cells. I'm just saying, it's usually somebody with a dredge title. One final consideration is that Warmind cells, unless spec'd for, don't drop orbs of light when you kill stuff with them, which means it's a counter synergy with charge with light. The reprised Eikolos weapons have an unlisted perk to spawn Warmind cells if you have Warmind mods on. You seem to get a cell every fifth kill or so, similar to the Seventh Seraph weapons, unless you kill enemies that are higher tier or count as vehicles. 
taken Acolyte eyes that you're seeing at contact and other places are counting as vehicles, and as of this video, will spawn cells 100%. Stowing the weapon does not take away from the chance to spawn a cell. You can test this by killing a few trash mobs, swapping something else, and pull out your piece, and kill another dude. You will notice the gun itself is keeping track of when you should get a cell, but only if you don't die. I like to attempt to control where the cell will drop by keeping track of when the next cell should spawn theoretically. If you know your next kill is likely to generate a cell, and it's like the last enemy in the room, it makes no sense to use the cell that will spawn, so use another weapon or finisher to kill that last enemy, a global reach cell is likely far more valuable for the next area. Now there is currently a glitch that will likely be patched because it increases cell generation rate to near Tyrant Surge levels. Some tick damage, like Anarchy, will trigger cell generation falsely if you swap to your Eikolos weapon as things die to the tick damage. The game counts your weapon as having killed the enemy with the Eikolos weapon, even if you don't shoot the gun. That's all I'm saying on the topic because it will likely be irrelevant soon, and if it's not, well, just gonna always use it. You can create cells more frequently with Wrath of Rasputin and the Seraph Eikolos weapons, but in most cases, that means you're generating cells and killing stuff with only primary ammo, which will probably make you come up short against whatever boss you're about to fight. In closing, the cells are still very powerful, but their consistency is dubious, and I genuinely believe that you'll see a fall off of people using cell builds once the tick damage spawning is uh, fixed. I'm one of those weirdos who didn't ever change their ship, ghost shell, or sparrow, so do you think I'm gonna undo all this work on these stupid things? I wouldn't use the gunslinger build personally, uh, like that you're seeing in the nightmare hunts. I'd rather use Eikolos SMG or hand cannon and roll the dice on a cell spawn than allegedly guarantee one from solar splash damage, but I wanted to see how good the spawn rate was for that one particular mod, Wrath of Rasputin. Either way, you can do some illicit stuff with the cells, but nothing too game-breaking considering that they don't work in Crucible. Except for breaking Gambit, maybe that's kind of illicit, but with the high cost of investment into your armor, it might not even be worth doing. Personally, this type of effect is something that I've always thought would be cool in the game, so I hope it sticks around, and it also feels super nice to help random people who don't know what's going on just by doing something passive and helpful and murderous. I know cells are getting more popularity and I think that's awesome. I hope people are encouraged to try them out and hopefully not shoot mine. If I had to pick one thing to return as a solution of our mine cell viability, it would be more passive champion disruption from armor, and Tyrant Surge could return with a new name and like one or two more slot requirements, to be fair, and maybe make it like a solid 8 or whatever for there to be no true subclass commitment requirement to spawn it. But one final thought is that Jotun is my preferred exotic that's solar over Sunshot, and I couldn't get cells to spawn with it when historically I could. For the filming of this video, it wouldn't work. I don't know what's causing that or what's going on there. Uh, maybe your experience is different, but I don't really plan on trying it again. Xenophage, on the other hand, absolutely spawns the cells if you're doing the Wrath of Rasputin hijinks, and Xeno is kind of cracked for DPS right now, so don't overlook it. Feel free to leave some feedback about your experience with the cells, uh, maybe some new tech old Coco don't know about. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.